Our speaker today is the Africa Ministry Director at Alpha International and the National Ministry Lead for Alpha Kenya. He holds a master's degree in organizational leadership from International Leadership University, ILU, and also has enhanced his skills through various professional courses over the years. He holds certificates in Advanced Leadership, Hey Guy Institute of Advanced Leadership, Hawaii, USA, Sound Production and Engineering, Daisy University, Kenya, Digital Media Management, Rhodes University, South Africa, Radio and TV Broadcasting from various institutions in USA, UK, Italy and South Africa. He is also a qualified designer who has practiced for about 27 years, winning several awards locally and internationally. He specializes in creative brand and media strategies as well as marketing and communications. He is a certified coach in entrepreneurship by Nehemiah Project Ministries USA. He is a trainer and facilitator in leadership and management matters and has a particular interest in mentoring and leadership development of young leaders and business entrepreneurs. Following his passion, he founded the Summit Leadership Trust in 2009. He serves as a trustee and a board a member for several local and international organizations. He is married to Tabitha and together they have two young adult sons. Destiny Life Church, with the joy of the Lord, let us welcome on stage Mr. Kingston Ogango. The bishop told me that you have been considering this particular year, you're considering the topic of manifestations. And I'm sure he's done a great job in introducing, and in the last two Sundays, as he's gone on to expose it this psalm. And so mine is just to add a little to what we have been going through as we continue to go on today. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, 19, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, for even the whole creation, all nature awaits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's Son to be made known, awaits for the revealing and the disclosing of their sonship. You know, I love the Amplified Version because it amplifies the word beyond just what we see. Now, when you read that verse, there are two things that the verse presupposes. Number one, Paul describes a creation that is experiencing an awareness of something better to come. And it says, by creation, Paul seems to refer to all things that God has created, from plants to animals to people to water to the skies. And for all is waiting for that moment when God will make everything right. The second thing that Paul presupposes here is that there's a moment that is coming when Christ will be glorified and those who are his own will be made or identified for sure. That if you're a son of God, you will be known for sure that you cannot hide anymore. Paul describes his future time that God and says that they're waiting Eagerly, everything is eagerly waiting for that moment. But as you look through this scripture, 19 is in the context of what Paul says from verse 18 or further on from verse 14 coming down. And he says that these present sufferings that we have on earth, uh, on this side of eternity, are not worth comparing for the glory that is yet to come at that time when we will totally be revealed. Given life is full of enormous sufferings, uh, God's glory must be incomprehensively wonderful. And no way does it minimize our pain. But what it does is, on the contrary, it acknowledges. Apostle Paul writes the Christians, and, he, uh, and this particular part of uh, Scripture is not written to the non-Christian. He's actually talking to the church. He's talking to the Christians, and he's telling them about how they specifically have to be sons of God. You know, many times we are Christians, but sometimes we do, we do not know our identity, where we stand. And it is important to be reminded. And so as we look at this Scripture... 
is talking about an eternal perspective, a time that is coming of full revelation, but there's also a present reality of how do we manifest ourselves on a daily basis, that we bring out the sonship that we have in Christ Jesus. If you read verse 14 to 16, the Bible says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you received, that is Romans 8, 14 to 16, just in case you are lost. Let me go again. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are go, uh, the children of God. The Spirit you re- received does not make you slaves so that you, uh, uh, you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought you out about your adoption to sonship. By him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with the Spirit that we are God's children. And so Paul is uh, bringing up a very important message here that we have been adopted into sonship. And you know, sonship has an important space, which I'll be speaking in a minute. John, in 1 John uh, 3, 2 says that, Beloved, we are not... uh, uh, Beloved, we are... Even here, now God's children, it is not yet disclosed, made clear what will will become thereafter. But we know this, when he comes and he is manifested, we shall, as God's children, resemble and be like him, for we shall see him just as he is. This is a time of revelation that is coming. And there will be an identity. When you look at my son, Andrew, you will see something that resembles me, isn't it? Either the complexion, you know us, we are blessed with melanin. Yeah? We don't know whether we are black or dark black, but we are somewhere there. We are blessed with some melanin. Now, when you look at Andrew, there must be features that says that this guy belongs to me. And this is what John is saying. That that time of revelation, there will be no confusion. We will know that there is an identity that has been brought about. Sonship gives us four important things. This is still my introduction. Number one is identity. You know, Peter says in 1 Peter 2.10, once we are not a people, but now we are a people of God. What does that say? That we were excluded, but because you have been born again, you have received identity in Christ. Number two is status. You were once a slave, but now you are no longer a slave to the law, but you have been liberated. Now you have received the right status in Christ Jesus. Number three is position. As a slave, you stood guilty before your master and you are an object of wrath. But because, that, because sin has been enslaving or has enslaved us, we stood as slaves to sin. But through the reconciliation of Jesus Christ, we get a new position in Christ. We are alive and not dead because Christ has redeemed us and made us alive in him. And so we get a new position. And number four, and most importantly, we get into a relationship. As sin is a slave, when we are born again, we get into a new relationship with Christ. And so Four important things that sonship gives you. Number one is identity. Number two is status. Number three is position. And number four is relationship. Because you are only a son when you have a relationship with a father. That you can go to the father and say, Daddy, I need this and this. Daddy, can you do this for me? Daddy, and you know, many of you, you've just come from taking children to school a few weeks ago. You know the demands of daddy. They don't care how much money you have. But because they are sons, they ask, they request, they actually almost demand. Why? Because there's a relationship that connects them to you. So so Paul's central point here is that when we receive the spirit of sonship, we get something important. I don't know if you remember something that uh, has happened uh, a few years ago. There was an advert that ran for Kiwi. And today, I want to talk about how we can manifest through our talents and our gifts. Talents and our gifts. I know Bishop was looking at spiritual gifts. I am not going that direction. I am looking at your natural 
talents and your natural gifting. And there was an ad that ran a few years, or years ago. It said, hey, would you talk easy? You remember that ad? Jionyeshe, Simama, Imara, Mbeleya. I don't want to sing it because I may just sing it off key. But what did that ad say? There's a way of manifesting yourself when you have kiwi. Ujitokeze, ujionyeshe, usimame, imara, mbele ya watu. Now imagine if you have very clean shoes and you're only shining for the shoes and you're not shining for Christ. But the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 16, sorry, you'll have very many scriptures to read today, uh, but uh, let's keep going because I can see Bishop has started well. You are reading the word, even if you are enduring like my brothers in the book of Numbers, it is well. You will receive something. At least you remember one name, even if it is a, the, you pronounce it wrongly, utakumbuka. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a man's gifts makes room for him and brings him before great name great men. The word gift in the Hebrew translation is actually a present. And room is translated as broaden. So if you were to rewrite this, uh, this particular proverb, we'll say a man's presence will broaden, cause expansion or create opportunity for him. And on top of that, a man's present will bring him before great men. Have you got it? Because it says what a man's gift. So if we replace gift with the present, this is how it will read. A man's present will broaden because we said room is broadening. Cause expansion or create opportunity for him. And on top of that, a man's presence will bring him before great men. What were you designed to do? God has given each one of us a gift. There is no man on earth who does not have a gift. Many times I meet people who say, me, I am not gifted. Why? Because you think you must be an artist. Why? Because you think you must be able to sing. God has gifted us differently because God is not a mean God. He's a God who gives us all good things. And the Bible says that he gives all good things to all he loves. And so if you are beloved of the Lord, you are gifted. And all of us are gifted. We may manifest it differently, we may exercise it differently, but God has given us a gift. And our gifts are to be fulfilled, have to be exercised for the fulfillment of the vision and what God has planted in each one of us. That God has fashioned you, God has created you, that you may bring forth something greater. And one of the things that God has done through our gifting and through our exercise of our gift, we begin to be manifest God's goodness to the world. Amen. Did you know gospel music is the highest selling music in Kenya? Did you know that? If you listen to Skiza tunes, what is the highest tunes you get? Now, many years ago when I worked in media, even the stations, secular stations, nations, citizens, and others only had a segment, a small program, once in a while, which you had to work hard to convince them to have, to play gospel music. As I speak now, tell me which station is not playing a gospel program. Did you know Nation is not a Christian station? It's not owned by us. Yes, it is not. It is actually owned by Muslims, if you didn't know that. But it is playing gospel music this morning. Citizen and the others. So what I'm trying to say is that God uses his own to manifest himself to the world. But there are five important things that I'd like to share with us this morning about talents and gifts. Number one, talents open extraordinary doors. Talents open extraordinary doors. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 29, do you see poor people skilled in their work? They will work for kings and not ordinary people. When you are skilled in your work, things will conspire that you do not work for ordinary men. I had a privilege once, let me give this as a testimony, not to boast, but as a testimony. I have done work for three presidents of this country. 
from the time President Moy, Kibaki, and then Kenyatta when they went. And I did not do that because I had a name to go to State House. What took me to their spaces was the work I was able to do with my hands. Why? Because that gift opened a door for me to interact with a not ordinary mere man. I don't know how many of you have had a chance of entering State House. I know George here has entered. It's an awesome space. Many of us, even when you just see the gate, you begin to get excited, isn't it? Unona tuwa paskari wengi, unona watu na bunduki, unangalia ukondani, you don't see the house, you only see trees. My friend, when you enter that space, is when you realize that this is not a space for ordinary people. You find people, ministers, sitting, carved themselves on the seats, waiting for the controller of State House to have mercy on them that they may see the president. You know, a powerful guy who has come with an entourage, big Mercedes, he's told, sir, you can only enter with one car. You cannot come with all those people of yours. Let them stay outside. You are entering royalty, isn't it? The space. And so this is what the Bible it says, that when you see people skilled at their work, they will do what? They will work for kings. Maybe you don't. We have not seen kings in this country. We have not seen kings. One time I went to see the bishop of the Coptic Church of Egypt. Bishop Papa Unacheza Bon. Huh? His office is all gold. All gold, and I mean it. Here on Gong Road. I'm not talking about in Egypt. Here, Gong Road. <laughs> At Coptic Hospital. You know, there's a bishop's. You cannot just enter. They, it took me more than one and a half years to get even access to the bishop. And then when you sit there, you actually realize you are a mere man. Yeah? <laughs> the people that surround him, it is true royalty. It is a place where you see opulence. It is a place where you see power in exercise. He can call shots. And this is what the Bible says. A man called Leo Boscoleni says, your talents is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. Now, when God has given you a gift, what are you doing with it? Men may fail through the lack of purpose than the lack of talent. They can fail because they lacked what, how to find purpose, but not lack of purpose. Number two, talents are the window through which God sees the world. Always use your talent to glorify God. And this is one thing I'll be talking a bit more. I'm keeping some energy, you know, for lit. Bishop who told me I must be on spot. So I'll be in sneakers and I'll, be, I'll try to loosen up. So that when, when we are there, yeah, we must glorify God with our talent. How many of us are glorifying God with the gifts that God has given you? You have been given a good voice. You are a good speaker. You are a man who is endowed. Where are you speaking? Are you taking your voice to glorify God? Or are you using it in other places? Are you motivating people to the kingdom? Or are you motivating them to wealth? May the Lord help you. Colossians 3, 23 says, Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not to men. Knowing that the Lord your God will receive the reward of your inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And so we must use. So it is a window that God uses to bring. He uses to worship, to draw men to himself. That the gifts we have, if you are a singer, can your singing bring men and women to God? Can people listen to your voice and not listen to you? You know, in the olden days when we didn't have good voices, we said just listen to the words and not listen to my voice. But now we are saying, can you use the voice? We don't want to listen to the words. We want to listen to the words and the voice. And bring and draw 
meant to you? When they listen to the voice of your voice, do they get the conviction of God? Or do they feel, what a talented person? Do they begin to feel about the stars? Or do they begin to feel the state of their hearts and drawn to a place where they're saying, oh God, what a wretched person I am. I need God because of that song that has been made. We live in an age and time where gospel music has been merchandised. It has become something else to help us to get to podiums and stages. And not a voice where it is calling out men who are in sin and calling them out to sin, to, to salvation, coming and following Christ, but a place where we entertain. I feel so sad these days. You have clubs where they're playing jazz and people are drinking beer and drinking whiskey and wine. And then you find a gospel musician has also come there to also help entertain. May the Lord help you if you're entertaining people. Number three, talents set you apart. Talents set you apart. The book of Daniel chapter one is a very important chapter, but I'll, I'll just look at a few verses. When you look at verse three, chapter one, verse three, then the king ordered Ashpenaz, the chief of the, his account official, to bring into the service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility, young men without physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude of every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, qualified to serve in the king's palace. And he was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. The kings assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among them was, Jude, was from Judah, Daniel, uh, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. To those four young men, God gave knowledge, understanding of all kinds of literature and learning and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Now, when you read that part of script, portion of scripture, these were not ordinary. In fact, it says there were young men who came from royal family and nobility. So they were not mere young people who were picked because somebody had sympathy on them. They were people who were born in royalty. They had learned the steps and the skills and the ways of living in royalty. You know, one of the things that when you live in royalty, you must behave like royalty. You do not choose when to dress. You do not choose how to dress. You know, you saw the royal family, when one young man decided he cannot follow the order of royalty, they had to kick him out. Because royalty has a procedure and a protocol. And that protocol is never changed because it is part of it. And so this young man came from there. But what does it say? They had no physical defect. So they were not like me, who has all things and bumps everywhere where we are trying to help. They were handsome. Showing aptitude of every kind of learning. So they were not people who you are going to help. Yeah? Those who are singing that song, Sisi Niwale Tulisaidiwa. Hawakukua hao. They had every part. Walikuwa yeah? wanayo. They were well informed. So they were not those ones who were saying, me, I don't listen to news. Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian and you, you are a one to manifest the love of God and to show the world where it is going. I want to beg you, by God's mercies, do not be ignorant by saying, I do not listen to news. How are you praying for the world when you don't know what the world is saying? How are you praying for the things that are going in this nation when you have no idea? When you are told, oh, there's a new law that was passed. Why? Because you do not listen. Oh, I mean, Kizangi news. These young men were well informed. And then they were quick to understand and qualify to serve in the king's palace. So what did this mean? That they were just not ordinary. When you bring out your talent, God will give you platforms and places. I was born in a family that you don't even know in this country. At the back of beyond somewhere in western Kenya. But by the grace of God, because of what God has deposited in me, I have stood on stages and podiums globally, not because I had a father who pushed me. I didn't have a Nigerian father, but <laughs> God helped me. And so what we are saying is that when you bring out your talent, look at this. The Bible gives us an example of young men who had everything and were qualified to serve in the king's palace. 
There was a thorough vetting. There was not just anybody could get in because kingship needs people who are thorough, who are, in fact, it says quick to understand. So you are not told water and then you bring wine because you forgot that water and wine are different. They look almost the same, but they are not the same. You have to be quick to understand. And he said he was to teach them the literature of the Babylonians. Because when it sets you apart, you even get a lingua. You know, when you get to certain spaces, you don't speak the same way. In fact, when somebody is appointed to the diplomatic forces, one of the first things they do, they go to school of government, and they are taught the protocols and the procedure of being a, a diplomat. You cannot just enter and say, you know, Sasa Mimini, ambassador so and so. You must go through a thorough training process. Why? Because diplomacy has protocol. And it has a way it works. And so this is the same way God is saying that when you have been given a talent, that God will use this talent to set you apart. People will be looking at you and saying, my friend, how did you get here? But Lord, you got here because you have released your gift back to God. And when you have done that, God uses that gift to elevate you to greater spaces. Let me not go. There's a whole sermon I'll have preached on Daniel, but let me go. On. Number four. Is it number three or four? Talents demonstrate your uniqueness. Talents demonstrate your uniqueness. You know you are in Christ and what you do best with your talent. God has called you, and when you sit with yourself, what is this thing that you can pay for to do? That is your talent. Something that burns in you. And many of us want to copy others. We want to die like copies. God has made you an original. You are unique. Do not die a copy. George Washuri has been gifted differently than Bishop Phillips has been gifted. The mistake Bishop will try to do is to try and be like George Washuri. Why? Because God did not make photocopies. God makes only originals. And every original is unique. It, is, has an, it has an authentication that you cannot repeat. You cannot copy it. And so everybody is unique. Even your children are unique. Not two children. If I saw my two sons, they look like light and darkness. In fact, if you don't look closely, you can think, Pengine, Awasi Watoto Wangu. Why? Because God has made everybody unique. Whatever God has given you. I don't know if I've said this story here before. Many years ago, I struggled because I did not have a big voice to preach. Yet God was calling me to preaching. And one, I was going through a very difficult time at that particular time. I had just lost my business. And then one of the pastors in the city who is my good friend said, Brother, you have never preached for me. And now he had this big congregation of about 4,000 people in one service. And he said, No, I want you to preach for me. So I felt, first of all, for friendship's sake, I must say, yes. But after I said yes, I started worrying why I said yes. Why? Because he's a man of such presence. If he stood here, yeah, he has presence, he has charisma. And I remember now when he introduced me, I had been, I'd been going through this and asking Lord, what will I speak? Because he told me the topic is up to you. And so one evening I was driving somewhere and frustrated and the Lord told me, speak about the crisis of the in-between between God's purpose and God's fulfillment. What is that crisis? Between what God promised and said, I will make you this and this. I will bless you this way. And now there's been a crisis. You have lost the business. Everything has gone haywire. The thing that you thought would work seems to be going haywire. Do you still believe in God's fulfillment for the promise? So I stood on the stage, and as he had finished introducing me, I was arguing with God. People thought the spirit of God was ministering to me. It was not. <laughs> I stood there and asked God, why have you allowed me to go, come here? I don't even have the voice. And God asked me a question. What was the role I gave to Moses? What designation did I give him? And I said, uh, to lead the children of Israel, I said, no. I sent Moses, as what? 
He was supposed to be a mouthpiece. He was supposed to go and receive a messenger, to receive a message and give Pharaoh. But Moses had many shortcomings. The Bible says he was a stammerer, and his stammering was so bad. Have you ever met a stammerer? Do you have a relative who is a stammerer? Do they need an interpreter? Moses had two, Aaron and Miriam. That's how bad he was. He was not able to articulate. Why didn't God take the man who was articulate, Aaron, and give him the job to do the job? Why didn't he give him? He didn't. He, too, he still said, Moses, you are the man that I want to do the job. And he was giving him a communications role. And God told me, you are my mouthpiece. I'm not looking for your voice. I'm not looking for your obedience. I'm not looking for how smart you speak. I'm looking for you to be ready to receive what I will give you. And the Bible says, at the right time, I will give you the utterance. And as I stood there, I said, Lord, I accept. And that was the trajectory that changed me. Because I began to realize God was calling me to spaces that I was not ready for. Because I gave excuses. I don't have a bass voice. You know, when I was growing up, when other boys were breaking their voices, when they got deep voices, mine remained high-pitched. Yeah? <laughs> and I was saying, God, how come? Me, I don't have this kind of booming voice. Because when I have with my friends, when they talk, you know, even if, if a lady is outside, they know there's a jamao kundani. But when I talk, they are not too sure. Ninani, you go kondan. But what was God telling me? I have given you a gift. And I want to use that gift. And I want to set you apart. And when you obey is when we take the gift that God has given us and begins to accelerate it. And the moment I said yes, that service was the most... I, I, I had prayed for people for more than two hours. The entire church came for an altar call. I have never seen it in my life to death. The entire church came for an altar call. And they did not just want to be prayed from a distance. They wanted me to touch them. I was shaking like a fiddle after those two hours. What am I saying? That that gift that you want God to set apart, maybe it's time to say, God, I want to surrender it to you. I don't know. I feel like this man who has a very high-pitched voice, who does not feel. I feel like Moses who is stammering. But God is saying what? I want to use you and use your gift and to set you apart for where he is taking you. It is Lila. Gifty Akita who says, comparison is a waste of energy. Every individual is unique with unique talents. Find your passion and live your best life. God works with us differently. Friends, because I want us to have some time of prayer. Let me say this last few words. The Apostle Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 10 to 11. Each one of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, they, sh they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be glory and power forever and ever Amen. What is Peter saying? He's saying three things. Number one, he's saying, be a good steward of what gift God has given you. Are you using the gift God has given you well? You know what stewardship is? Stewardship is taking and utilizing what you have been given and utilizing it good. Making sure you do not leave anything or waste anything. God has gifted you. Do not look for the gift that God has not given you. If you don't know how to find your gift, find a bishop. He will give you a test to help you find what your gift is. But all of us have a gift, have a talent. Some are natural talents that come. There are people who if they stand here and they start to pray. They pray as if they, are, they, they, they have crammed the whole Bible. You've seen those people. When you try to pray one scripture, you mix it four times. Yeah. Why? Because they have been given a spirit that can remember scripture and internalize that scripture very well. And so Peter is saying here, 
Be a good steward. Each of, of you must use whatever gift you have received to serve others. It is not about us. It's about the kingdom of God. And we will only bring manifestation when we serve others. Jesus says, I did not come to be served, but to serve. Because the kingdom of God is an upside kingdom. It's a kingdom where when you are up, you become a servant. You don't become a king. In fact, they say, if the service is too high for you, leadership is too low or you do not fit for leadership. Why? Because you must be able to serve. Number two, he says, maximize every opportunity that God has given you. In fact, it is Solomon who says in Ecclesiastes 9, 11, I returned and saw under the sun, the rest is not to the swift, the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance will happen to them all. God gives us time and chance. Some years ago in the early 90s when I had just joined college, my father called me and he told me, he had only paid one semester, and he told me, son, I think I've educated you enough. You had just retired. I had a sister in Kenya High, two brothers in Kakamega High School, and another one who was, you know, as we were born, a few. So, there was another one who was joining. His pension was 1,750 shillings. And he told me, my friend, I've educated you enough. Jipange Sasa. And at that point, I stood by and I thought, God, what am I going to do? I'm in the city of Nairobi. I'm, I don't have a shelter. I have nothing. I have been. And you know one of the things that I remembered? What Ecclesiastes is saying. The rest, the rest is not the to the swift, because if people who are fast, but they stumble just before they get to the finishing line. Yeah, the people of everything, but it says there's one thing that God gives to both of us, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are fast, whether you are brown or black, whatever stage you are in, time and chance. And I remember saying to myself, I am not going shags. I was not destined to go and sit in shags. If I did today, I'll be drunk with changa and something, or maybe I'll be dead by now. And I told myself, I am going to trust God to help me. Why? Because God had given me what? Time and chance. And many of you can retell the story. What is it that you're doing with the time and chance God has given you? Are you maximizing what God has given you? It is Nicky Vard who says, you can get fired from your job, but you'll never get fired from your talents. Number three, shine bright. Matthew 5.16 says, in the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see the good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Shine bright. What are the good deeds you're doing? God is not looking for how many good deeds you're doing. He's saying, let shine with whatever you have. What are you doing? Because the manifestations of sonship is taking what God has given you and saying, God has gifted me and I'm bringing this part to the world. I want to show them I and God are majority because God is with me. I will not shrink. I will shine. I will do what I need to do. You know, if only 10% of Christians who are Christian Christians took their things seriously, we will change this world. Jesus only had 12 disciples. In fact, one was a crook. But he changed. Today we are Christians. Why? Because of 11 men who are faithful. How many are we in this service today? How many gifts are seated in these pews? Yet, bishop will be struggling, and people will be struggling in this church. Everywhere we are going, employers are struggling to find people. Why? Because you're sitting and intimidated with your gift. God is saying, shine, that God, people may see the good deeds. And God is calling us to a place where we can bring the good deeds that he has given us. I want to end there in the interest of time. And I want every eye closed and all of us up standing. I 
And I want you to take a moment of reflection. First of all, I want to call two, two categories of people. The first category, we can talk about manifesting and bringing out the best. But if you are not in the kingdom, you have not been come into the adoption, you cannot enter that space. And if you are here, maybe you are a Christian. And you've backslidden because a boyfriend left you, a girlfriend left you, a husband left you, a wife left you, or something happened. You didn't like the church you left. Or something happened and you've backslidden. I want to pray for you. And I want you to come and rededicate your life to the Lord. Is there such a person? You used to be a Christian. God has used you immensely. But over time, you've grown cold. And you're saying today, that this year of manifestation, this year that we want to see God manifesting and doing great things in this church, will just pass you by unless you rededicate. Anybody like that, just with every eye closed, it's not for us to embarrass you. It is time to commit. You know, it is between you and God. It is not about us. Is there such a person? Just lift up your hand quickly. I want to see you the service. Thank you, my sister. Any other person? Any other person? You have been a Christian before and you have fallen. And God is calling you back. Any other person, maybe I'm not seeing because of the, my eyes. So I want to do, take a step of courage. And if you are near the people who lifted up their hands, just encourage them to come to the front. There's a second category of people. You have never been born again. You've never been a Christian. But today you're saying, today. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. And God is here to save you and dedicate you to the Lord. Is there such a person? I want to pray for you before I leave here. Just lift up your hand. Today is a great day. Thank you, my sister. Let's clap for her as she comes. And any other person? Thank you, my brother. Come, 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 come. Any other person who wants to give their lives to the Lord? Please come. Please come. Please come. This is the most important thing of the service. Can we celebrate them? Let's celebrate those who are coming to the Lord. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Any other person you want to give your life to the Lord, please come. Please come. I'm ready to wait for you. Any other person? You want to be born again. You want to be saved. Is there any other person before we close you out? One more minute before we close you out. But after this service, if you're still embarrassed, please find a pastor, find an elder, find. If you don't know them, you're new to the church, for the people sitting in front here, and tell them, I want to give my life to the Lord, and they will help you find it. The third category, you're a Christian. God has gifted you in many ways, but you've always had an excuse. You've always looked across the fence and said, you saw so-and-so has been given. Me, I don't have. And today you're feeling challenged that you may bring out your gift. You may manifest yourself to the world that the world may see Jesus. Is there such a person who you're saying, I need to be helped. My, my gift is hidden. I need to bring it out. And I'm pray I need a prayer. Let's just lift up your hand quickly. Thank you, thank you. I can see those hands. Any other person? I thought everybody will bring up their hands, but maybe you guys are using them well. Thank you for those hands. Any other person? If you are in that category, I want you to come here. Not here, but here. Just walk. Just walk quickly. Let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Let's celebrate so that we don't disappear in the crowd. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other person? God has given you a gift. And you're giving excuses. You're not deploying it well. God is asking for that gift. You know, sometimes God can recall a gift because you are not utilizing it well. Any other person? I don't know. Brothers, you're all, all using your gifts. Huh? So, I'll ask this, this one to say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I realize my sin. I repent of every sin I commit. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. 
and receive me as a son and, or daughter and deliver me and make me your son in Jesus name amen the Bible says if you believe and you confess you're born again and so you'll help you on how to deepen your faith and for those who are here I want to pray father in the name of Jesus I pray this morning this afternoon by the power of your Holy Spirit for those that have lifted up their hands you have come before you Lord saying that Lord they have not utilized their gifts well Lord I pray that the, by the power of your Holy Spirit the Lord may the unction of your Holy Spirit release in them the power to do that which is in them Lord that they will use their gifts to glorify Lord they will walk into space the Lord, because you say a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great kings. Lord, I pray the Lord, may you bring them, Lord, may you take them to platform, may you take them to podium, may you take them beyond the borders, oh God, as they obediently obey you, Lord. And for all of us, I pray this morning, Lord Jehovah God, may you help us, oh God, to be Lord those that bring out the God you've deposited in us as good stewards of what you have called us to do Lord the Lord we may maximize everything you've deposited in us Lord to the glory of your kingdom oh Lord we honor you we bless you and we glorify Lord as we go into the week Lord may we be salt and light oh God that men may see us may see us and glorify you Lord we worship you we honor you and we bless you in Jesus precious name the Lord bless you the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. <laughs>